And you talk about torture, if they ever show it, psychological, chemical, all of it has been done to me and my son to in plain sight. Um, so where was she then? I'll tell you where uh, in 86 I ended up in Roanoke. And by the way, there's a connection to me being here and um, Anastasia being murdered by Blue Ridge Mental Health. <laughs> wow. Uh, in Charlottesville, and that was Anastasia, and she, she's a cousin to me. She was the real daughter of Zion Nicholas, a beautiful man. So they've gone in and taken out my father, King Ferdinand, a long time ago, uh, political leader Zion Nicholas's family, and kidnapped me. Now then, I want to go back to the Kennedys. In 86, I came up here, and I starved. Nobody would, uh, I mean, food. I couldn't get shelter, jobs, nothing. It was all shut down. And everybody knew it. I've been told over and over they didn't want to get involved. They were afraid of the repercussions because law enforcement. And, uh, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. Law enforcement was in on all of it. And they were afraid of repercussions. So their goodwill stops at giving to goodwill or giving to uh, the rescue mission or shelters or United Way. Uh, just like one of the doctors I knew that I think he was on it said, just before they put any freeze in the April Fool uh, Day of 80, because this is all a joke that the Americans could kidnap me and put me over here and torture me every day of my life and make me beg and torture my sons, and they're above the law. So I want to get back to the Appalachian Trail. This is, uh, I stayed up there and stayed up there during the winter and it, when it was so cold and without proper clothing at all or sleeping bags or uh, stoves or anything, just to have a place to be. Now then, uh, that spring, it was just before they built the new trail uh, from Trapville up to uh, the shelter for Hart and Knob where I was in Trapville. So it was just before then, and you had to come up the old trail off Mountain Pass Road in Trapville. Well, I'm standing there after spending a good bit of the winter there, freezing, starving. I'm back up there just to have a place to stay off the side of the road, going from one town to the other, begging. And lo and behold, there are a couple of guys come up, and it's a little hefty uh, climb, a mountain, a uh, mile and a half up from the highway, Mountain Pass. And I remember looking at him, and I said, well, you look like John John Kennedy. And he says, he told me he was. He assured me he was. And he had his best friend there with him, uh, the one they used to talk about so much. So he said, uh, I just came up here to see how you were living. So I, I didn't know if he was really John John or not. He sure looked like him. Uh, but I started telling him what his father and his grandfather had, well, his fa yeah, his father and grandfather had done to me. And uh, he, this was a joke to him. He came up to see how I was living, um, to mock me because of what his family had done to me. So he bought a ticket, he and his buddy, all the way from, I guess, Boston to Roanoke, Virginia, and made their way out by taxi or however, 11 miles to the trail and up, just to gloat that they'd managed to put the monarch living in a lean-to shelter and getting run from that freezing and starving. Uh, and I've always said you'd think if they cared one bit, they could put a bag of peanuts in for me to eat. So uh, I want to mention also that his plane went down, John John Kennedy, with his wife Caroline. And, uh, you know, I don't know. Ask yourself. Uh, everybody says, God bless America. I, you know, you better ask yourself twice if he's condoned all this. Now you got Caroline Kennedy going over and telling the Japanese what they can or can't do. I think they've been through enough, just like I have. It's about time people paid for their crimes. Only half of them are dead, but a whole lot of them are still alive. And how dare CBS or anybody else condemn the Japanese and they... They can't get enough of the Kennedys, and they don't dare mention me or my father or what's been done to me and my kids here. And they don't mind. I wrote about mind control, and I did want to put that in because this is true. I wrote about it in 77, 78, 
about putting chips in heart bypasses and root canals. Now you don't have to do that. It's been so updated. But I was flown out to France because he was shot, the guy that was programmed. Now I'm just going to read you off just a few that's happened since then. And they've been done in patterns. You've got Timothy McVeigh. He said the military put one up him. And they put a one in William so that he wouldn't be kidnapped. I thought that was cute. His great-grandfather kidnapped me. That's the reason he's sitting there using my money with his grandmother and his dad. Uh, this is the Sandy Hook. And this young fella, Adam Lanza, was programmed. Uh, he killed himself. He was programmed, too. This is James Holmes of the Aurora, Colorado, and he's being, he was under mind control, has nothing to do with mental illness. So you have to stop the programming to put him and treat him for mental illness is torture beyond belief and feed him psychotic drugs and blame mental illness. It's not only misdiagnosis, it's totally used as torture chamber. Here's the Giffords, Mark and Scott. Kelly were astronauts. That's my son's name, and I won't go any further with that because their names were used in a lot of the murders. And this is his wife, Gifford, in Tucson, shooting, and uh, she was a congressperson. Where I just ran, she was elected. Now, I want to mention um, this tip of the iceberg, the man, the uh, what Edward Snowden, and I like him by the way, and how dare someone say he should be prosecuted for God's sake. Uh, but his is just touching the icebox. Uh, ice box. Well, you can tell I'm standing up and I'm hurting. I've got arthritis so bad I'm going to have to sit down. It's a touch of the um, iceberg is all of what is really being done. I wanted to mention next door the uh, Toronto, where I am, is the uh, Virginia Tech shootings and a bunch of others. 33, where the uh, gentleman from South Korea was a student there, and he killed himself in 32, or there was 33, um, April the 16th of 07. And what they have listed it as, that he was just a nutcase, really. Uh, no, he was programmed, he's a victim himself. Now then, there were several others that happened here, but I want to mention this before the tape goes. This is the, uh, psychi he was a psychiatrist at Fort, did the Fort Hood shootings. He finished school at uh, Virginia Tech, Blacksburg, and uh, I guess he's on death row. Uh, he uh, was allowed to represent himself, but he never knew about being programmed. And he's a psychiatrist. And by the way, if psychiatrists can't tell the difference which they can in mind control and uh, mental illness, then they need to get out of the job. So I'll just show this again, the Grand Theater in Holmes, who's being tortured, and they hate his guts for crime, that the motive is lies within the person doing the programming. So that's why they can't tell you the motive in a lot of these. And by the way, the press does know it. And I didn't mean to do another tape. I've done a lot of them. And I don't think it's helping at all. Uh, but it did get to me to hear CBS um, making a hero out of the Kennedys. who got their money off the British and off of my hell and torturing me. I haven't wa heard one word out of the press or any of them about the mind control murders because it would lead back to me and my kidnapping. That was used in the Kennedy and the Martin Luther King. And that's a whole other story because I lived in Atlanta and you should see what happened to me. I can't, I don't know if I'll live to see it told or see my children or clear my father's name. And I don't think this is going. I'm not sure. don't think it is. But I'm going to stop here. I, I had to say that because who cared for the Japanese? Okay? Who cared for me?